that shows people how to speed up their websites, specifically their WordPress websites. Now this guy Jeff is really good and if you need more engagement with your websites, if you want to be more successful with Google Ads in your website, you really need this training. So take a look. Hey, this is Lewis from Oxygen, and today I'm going to teach you how to get your WordPress websites to load fast. And this is going to be easy. You don't need to write any code. You don't need to be a performance optimization expert. You don't need to tweak your server configuration. You don't need to mess with your database. And you certainly don't need to buy any plugins. You just follow along with me step by step. And in 60 minutes, you can have a fast website. So here is the website that I'm going to be optimizing this tutorial. And you're just going to follow along with me step by step and do these same things to your website. And before the optimization, we have a fully loaded time of 5.1 seconds, which is terrible, and a total page size of 13.6 megabytes, which is also terrible. And after optimizations, we got a fully loaded time of 435 milliseconds, which is lightning fast. That's less than half a second, and a total page size of 386 kilobytes. And we didn't change this page at all. It's the same page, same content on the page. Uh, we just optimized it. And it's now 35 times smaller and loads 12 times faster. Now, before we get started, I want to explain that we're going to focus on actual load time. And I also want to tell you what you're going to learn in this tutorial. So speed is measured by a clock, by a timer, not by a letter grade. Because a good letter grade doesn't necessarily equal a fast load time. In this chart here, we got A on page speed and A on Y slow but we've still got a fully loaded time of 6.8 seconds and a page size of nearly 12 megabytes. So what we wanna do is make the page load fast for the end user. That's what actually matters. Because in the modern era, fast load times are absolutely essential. Uh, Google now is saying that speed is actually a ranking factor. So a slow loading website could be penalized by Google and rank lower uh, just because it loads slowly. And according to internet marketing expert, Neil Patel, 40% of people uh, abandon a website that takes more than three seconds to load. Um, if that doesn't motivate you, here are some statistics from Google, uh, from Google that says uh, is page load time goes from one second to three seconds, your bounce rate goes up by 32%. One to five seconds, bounce rate goes up by 90%. One to 10 seconds, bounce rate more than doubles. In fact, it more than doubles at six seconds. So if you don't want people bouncing off your website, then according to this, these stats, obviously every website's different, you can cut your bounce rate in half simply by reducing your website load time. So that's obviously huge. Now, in this tutorial, we're gonna focus on three simple steps to get fast load times. So the first thing we're gonna do is eliminate unnecessary bloat from our pages. When you build a website with WordPress, often you have a lot of plugins installed, and WordPress itself loads up some extra bloat that is typically unneeded on most websites. So we're just gonna go through your page, uh, see everything that's loaded on your page, and then eliminate anything that doesn't need to be there. Um, and then we're gonna reduce the file size of your actual page. So once we eliminate the unnecessary stuff, we're gonna say, okay, what we have here now is actually needed. How can we optimize this how can we compress this so that it takes uh, less time to get to the user? And then we want to make sure the page is delivered to the end user quickly by the web host. So we don't want the user going to yourwebsite.com and then your web host sits around for two or three seconds before it actually delivers that page to the user. We want that happening instantly. So I'm going to teach you how to read a waterfall chart. So you're going to basically see each thing that's loaded by your page and then you're gonna see how much time each thing takes to load. So things loaded by your page might be the page itself, uh, images on the page, fonts used by the page, tracking scripts, uh, plugin styles, plugin scripts, that sort of thing. And you're simply gonna go through this list, see how much time each thing takes to load, and then anything that's not essential, we're gonna remove, and anything that's slow, we're going to optimize. So it's gonna be simple and straightforward. In this way, we're not going to waste days chasing a perfect score, but get a slow loading website. You're going to invest minimum time and you're going to get a fast website. So one last thing I want to do before we get started is plug Oxygen. Oxygen is the visual builder that uh, is made by my company. 
And if you don't want to build a website with bloat on it, start with oxygen because when you build a blank page with oxygen, you've only got 23 kilobytes of stuff loaded by that page. Whereas if you build a blank page with Beaver Builder, you're starting with 325 kilobytes with Divi, nearly a megabyte with Elementor 604 kilobytes. And these numbers are without jQuery and uh, without Google fonts, just to be totally fair. But I mean, you're starting with big, big numbers using these other tools. So you're going to have to clean a bunch of crap off your pages if you do that. For example, here's the everything loaded on a blank page built with Elementor, just a heading and a button, right? We've got, it's loading font awesome, even if you're not using it. It's loading code for animations if you're not using it. Uh, just the default front end styles for our 270 kilobytes, which is ridiculous. Um, it's loading this jQuery swiper library for a slider, but if you're not using a slider, you don't need this. So this is stuff that you're going to have to eliminate by following the steps in this tutorial. Um, and you won't be able to eliminate some of this stuff like these front end styles. You'd actually actually have to go into the style sheet and tweak the code manually. Uh, whereas with Beaver Builder, Again, bunch of stuff you don't need. Magnific pop-up. What, what if you're not using it? Um, you know, just unnecessary stuff. A blank page with Divi. Uh, same deal. I mean, 596 kilobytes for the styles. I I don't know what is in there. Uh, 252 kilobytes of custom JS. Divi's the toughest to optimize out of these four. And then a blank page with Oxygen is there's the only stuff that's there is stuff that you put on the page. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we are gonna do is find and eliminate unnecessary bloat. Here is the site that we are going to be optimizing. Uh, right now it takes five seconds to load and we're gonna get it down to 0.5 seconds, half a second. So we're gonna make it load 10 times as fast as it does now. And this homepage is relatively straightforward. It doesn't look like it would take five seconds to load, right? We got a hero section, uh, some basic content, a couple images, and a footer. This is really straightforward, but it's still taking five seconds to load. So the first thing we're going to do to get it to load faster is we're going to eliminate plugin bloat, and we're going to eliminate WordPress bloat. So there's some extra stuff loaded by WordPress that is often not necessary on your site, so we're going to eliminate that. And also, any plugins that you have installed they might be loading things on various pages of your site that aren't absolutely necessary. So go ahead, open up your own website, log into the WordPress admin panel, and follow along with me. And step by step, I'm gonna show you exactly how to identify and eliminate the bloat on your site. Now, before getting started, if you have any optimizations plugins active, like Auto Optimize, you're gonna to wanna to disable that for this stage of the tutorial. You can re-enable it later, but the thing is we need to see each thing that your site is loading in a waterfall chart. That way we can remove the unnecessary stuff. So let's go ahead and get a waterfall chart and find the bloat on this site. So we're gonna to go to gtmetrics.com. That's G-T-M-E-T-R-I-X.com. This is my favorite performance testing tool. And then you're just gonna go ahead and paste in the URL to your site. And you're going to want to make sure it ends with this trailing slash here. You don't want it just to just be .com, .pro, .whatever. You want to make sure it ends with that trailing slash so we avoid getting a redirect in the performance report. So once you paste that in, just click Analyze. And this is going to load your site and see how much time it takes to load and give you a list of everything that's being loaded by your website. So here is our performance report and we're getting a fully loaded time of 5.1 seconds. So we wanna make this faster. So the first thing we're gonna do is go over to the waterfall tab that's right here and click that and then scroll down. And this is gonna give you a waterfall chart. This is a list of everything that's being loaded by your site. When a user goes to yoursite.com, here is everything that gets loaded. So let's go through this list and find the unnecessary bloat that's being loaded here that we could disable. So you're going to see, it's going to say get, and then it's going to, when you mouse over, you're going to see a URL to the resource that it's actually retrieving. Then over here, you'll see the size. And then over here on the right, you'll see how long it takes. So, okay, we request our website dot whatever. That's fine. Of course, we need that. Next thing, we're loading 
webfont.js from Google. We're, well, we're using Google Font, so that makes sense. The next thing we're loading is, and you're going to have to look at the URL and read this, wp-includes slash css slash dis slash block library slash style dot min dot css. So this is a file that's loaded by the new WordPress block uh, editor known as Gutenberg. And we're not actually using Gutenberg on this site. We're certainly not using it on the homepage here. This was built with Oxygen. So we don't need to load this file to the site. So we're going to remember that. We're going to disable that. Uh, next thing we're loading uh, is bbpress.css. So a lot of times you can tell from the file name that it's totally obvious where this is coming from. Obviously, the bbpress plugin we have installed. This is a forum plugin, but this doesn't need to be loaded on our homepage. This should only be loaded in the forum section of our website. So we're going to go ahead and disable that. Next, we've got, uh, you're going to have to read the path here, WB content slash plugin slash easy digital downloads. So obviously coming from the easy digital downloads plugin, these styles are probably necessary to handle, you know, checkout form, download buttons, etc. But since we don't have those on the homepage of our site, we can disable this on the homepage of our site. Next up, we've got uh, some files from Oxygen. These are uh, necessary because we are using Oxygen on the site. Um, we've got jQuery, which is typically necessary, but sometimes it's not. You can try disabling it and see if your site still works. It's usually necessary for things like, uh, you know, dynamic JavaScript type stuff. Um, next thing we've got is this request to stripe.com. So that definitely shouldn't be there. Now, we have this plugin installed, Easy Digital Download Stripe Payment Gateway, and this is so we can process credit cards through Stripe. The thing is, though, we need to process the credit card after the user buys the thing, goes to the checkout page, enters their credit card number. We don't need to be loading any Stripe code on our homepage because we're not doing any credit card processing here on our homepage. So we're going to definitely want to eliminate that. Um, Next up, we've got Google Tag Manager, so we're using that to track our analytics, so that's fine. Then we've got some images that are on the site. We've got something from Google Fonts. Well, we're using Google Fonts, although we're going to optimize these later. Um, then we've got another file from BB Press. So again, often you're going to have to read the whole URL and kind of figure out where it's coming from. You see WB content slash plugins slash whatever the name of the plugin is. That's the plugin that's loading that file. And we've got another file from Easy Digital Downloads. We have something in WP Includes. That means it's WordPress default stuff. Uh, this is probably not necessary on most sites, so I'm going to show you how to disable that. Then we've got all of our font files, right? Fonts.gstatic.com. Um, then we've got more stuff from Stripe. We've got a lot more from Stripe down here, so we're going to disable all of that. We've got Google Analytics, which makes sense. We're using Google Analytics on the site. Um, yeah, there's a lot more stuff from Stripe. So let's go ahead now and clean up all of these unnecessary assets that are being loaded on our site. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to install a free plugin. So go to your WordPress admin, go to plugins, click add new, and then you're going to search for a plugin called Asset Cleanup. So in search plugin, just type in Asset Cleanup. Here we go, and this is the one you're going to install, Asset Cleanup Page Speed Booster. Uh, make your website load faster, blah, blah, blah. So install now. And what this plugin is going to do is let us disable all the stuff we saw in this waterfall chart that's unnecessary from loading on certain pages of our website where it's not necessary. So let's go ahead, go over to our home page and clean this stuff up. So let's go to Pages, Home, Edit. So now that we've opened up our homepage for editing, we're going to see the asset cleanup box. Now, if you don't see this box because you're using the Gutenberg editor, then you may need to install the classic editor plugin because asset cleanup may not yet be compatible with Gutenberg. Maybe by the time you're watching this, it will be Gutenberg still very new. It was just released. So if you don't see this box, install the classic editor plugin. You'll see the box once you make your changes then you can disable Classic Editor, go back to using the Gutenberg Block Editor. Anyway, in the Asset Cleanup box, it's basically just going to give us a list of all the styles and all the scripts 
that are being loaded on this page. And we're simply going to unload the ones that aren't necessary. So here we have BBP default. And if you look down at the source, this is from BB Press. This is what we saw in the waterfall chart. We don't need it on this page. In fact, we don't need it on any page uh, of the page post type. We only need this on our forum. So let's just unload on all pages of this post type. Next up, easy digital download styles. Well, we may need it on our checkout page, but we certainly don't need it on our home page. Let's unload it on this page. Or we could unload it everywhere and then make an exception to load it on our checkout page. For example, if you only need this on the checkout page, unload it everywhere, then edit your checkout page and make the exception. So I'm going to choose unload on this page. Um, oxygen, well, we're using oxygen on this page, so we're going to keep these oxygen styles. And then down to scripts. Here is the Stripe JS script. Unload on this page. BB Press Editor. Unload on this page. Um, easy Digital Downloads Ajax. Unload on this page. Or you can unload everywhere. Unload on all pages of post type. Um, that's up to you. You'll you know have to make this decision based on the way your website works and what these actually do. Uh, so okay, now that I've done this, let's go ahead and update this. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove some default WordPress bloat. That's the things like the Gutenberg block styles we're not using on this page and that sort of thing. So by default, Asset Cleanup doesn't show those. So you have to go to Asset Cleanup, Settings, and scroll down. And you're going to disable this option, Hide WordPress Core Files from the Asset List. Well, we don't want to hide WordPress core files. We actually want to show them so we can disable the ones that aren't necessary. So you're going to turn this option off. Uh, then while we're here, we're going to unload some common things that WordPress loads that almost nobody needs. So do we need emojis? No, we're not using emojis on this side. If you're using emojis in your blog posts, then sure, leave this enabled. But otherwise, why are we loading JavaScript for emojis by default in WordPress? Very silly. So disable this, um, jQuery migrate. So this allows older jQuery code to work with the latest version of jQuery. But the thing is, unless you're using a really old theme or plugin or, or something, you know, that's ancient, you probably don't need this. So we'll disable that. And we're not using WordPress as a blog here. So we're not letting users leave comments on our site. So no reason to load this either. So let's go ahead and unload that. And now let's go ahead and save changes. And now we're going to go back to the home page and take a look at any uh, WordPress bloat that's being loaded here in the asset list and disable it. So WP block library, we don't need that. This is for Gutenberg, but we are not using Gutenberg anywhere on this site. So we're going to unload everywhere. And You may be able to get away with disabling jQuery. It depends what we're using. On this site, the mobile menu actually collapses into a toggle and we're using jQuery for that. So we're going to leave jQuery enabled. But if you don't need jQuery, may as well disable it. No reason not to test. And now we're, here's WP Embed. This is for embedding uh, things like YouTube videos, Twitter cards, etc. in your blog posts. If you have a blog where you're posting YouTube videos or Twitter cards, you're going to want to leave this enabled, at least on your blog, but we don't, so we can unload it everywhere. Or if we did have a blog, at least we could unload it on all of our pages and leave it enabled for blog posts. So let's go ahead and save this. And now let's go ahead and run another performance report. So I'm going to keep this one open so we can do a before and after. Go to gtmetrics.com, again, G-T-M-E-T-R-I-X, and paste in your URL, making sure to include the trailing slash, and analyze. And one thing to note is that if nothing has changed, then you may need to clear your cache in your web hosting control panel. So keep that in mind. If you run another performance report, you don't see any changes, you don't want to clear your cache, and then go to your website at least once to regenerate it, and then run the report. Anyway, here is our report, and look at this. We're now down to a fully loaded time of 3.3 seconds, whereas before we were at 5.1 seconds. So we've shaved almost two seconds off the load time 
just by eliminating some unnecessary plugin and WordPress bloat. In fact, let's go ahead and refresh this page and you'll see the page works the exact same way. Looks the same, works the same, nothing has changed. All we did is unload some stuff that's being loaded by this page, which is totally unnecessary. So again, fully loaded before 5.1 seconds, fully loaded after 3.3 seconds. Next up, we're going to optimize the images on our site. So on this site, I've got our logo image, I've got the hero section background image, the uh, photograph for this testimonial, this image of a clock, and then the logo in the footer. So let's go ahead and take a look at the performance report and see what needs optimizing. So let's go over to the waterfall tab. And what we're gonna do here is look for excessively big files. So this fourth column here is gonna give you the file size of each request. So we're gonna go down here and look for big files. So here's one, 86.5 kilobytes for avatar7.jpg. So we might wanna think about compressing that. Here's a huge one, 9.1 megabytes for clock.png. So we can definitely think about shrinking that down. And here's another one, 3.9 megabytes for this image of a clock here. In addition to looking at the sizes, you can also look for long gray bars on the right side. The length of the gray bar is the amount of time it takes for something to download. So anything with a long gray bar, you might wanna think about compressing if you can. So another place you're gonna to look to uh, see which images could be optimized is in the page speed tab. So that's gonna be over to the left of the waterfall tab, click page speed. And then you're gonna look for serve scaled images. And this may not be at the top of the list, so you may have to scroll down the list and find serve scaled images. And then once you click on that to open that, it's gonna tell you about images that you could scale down. So let's take a look at this one. Clock.png is resized from 2000 by 3000 to 500 by 750. So if we click this image and take a look uh, and zoom in, we'll see that this image is just absolutely enormous. But on the site, we're displaying it at a much smaller width. So what we can do is actually scale this down. This looks like it's something that's fresh off a digital camera or a really high resolution image from a photography website or right off your iPhone. We obviously don't need it to be this big. We want to scale it down. So let's go ahead and do that. WordPress actually in the media library has a built-in way to resize images. So you're gonna to go to your WordPress admin panel, go to media, and then you wanna find the image that you wanna resize. So that's this one here, but if you have a million images in your library, it might be hard to find. So you just wanna copy the file name here, clock.png, paste it into your search, and then you're gonna find the image. And let's go back to the performance report and take a look at the recommendation. It says we re it's uh, resized from 2000 to 3000, to 500 by 750. So that means we're displaying this at 500 pixels wide by 750 pixels tall on our actual page. Now, if we want the image to be retina friendly, in other words, high, uh, high resolution displays, high pixel density, it's usually about double. So we wanna resize the image to be double this recommendation. So we can make it 1000 by 1500 if we really wanna preserve the detail. So let's go ahead and do that. So in the media library, we're gonna click edit image. And then under scale image over on the right side for new dimensions, we're just gonna enter a thousand for the width and that's gonna automatically give us an appropriate height. Click scale and that is done. It'll say image saved and here's a scaled image. Now. One thing to note is that you're then gonna to have to possibly update the page that you're using this image on to point to the new image because it actually is gonna change the URL. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this image URL and then I'm gonna edit this in Oxygen. I'm gonna give it the new URL to the new clock.png image. And then I'll go ahead and save this page. Now let's continue optimizing the images. So. The next recommendation in serve scaled images is for avatar7.jpg. It says we're resizing it from 750 by 750 to 120 by 120. 
So let's go ahead and take a look. And that's right, we're, it's absolutely huge right here. If we take a look on the site, much smaller. So let's go to our media library and find that image. So we'll just clear our search here and click edit image. And we could resize to 120 by 120, but because I want this to be high resolution, even on retina screens, I'm gonna make it 240 by 240, double. And let's scale that down. So that's now scaled down. And again, you may have to update the URL depending on how you've loaded the image in your site. Let's paste in the new URL. And as you see, it looks the same. And let's go ahead and continue optimizing our images. So the next two recommendations is for our logo. It says we're resizing it from 300 to 121. Well, we want our logo to be absolutely pixel perfect, so we could shrink this to 242, but we're only gonna save five kilobytes for the logo, the white logo and the header, the logo and the footer, four or five kilobytes. We could do it, but really it's not worth it at this time. So let's go ahead and skip these. Um, let's go ahead and save the page now and run another performance report and see how much better we do. So I'm gonna copy the URL, go to gtmetrics.com, paste in, include the trailing slash, and run the report. So here's our new report. We've shaved off about seven megabytes. Previously, we were at 13.5 megabytes. Now we're at seven megabytes. But there's still a lot more we can do to these images. So if you look here at surf scaled images, it's caught these four images, but there's one image it hasn't caught. Remember in the waterfall tab, we found this massive image right here, bigbenclock.jpg, it's 3.9 megabytes. Well, the reason it's not picking this up is because it's used as a background image and the performance testing tool, it just missed it. But we still know about it because we see it in the waterfall. So let's go ahead and resize this. So let's find that image. Here it is right here. And if we look at dimensions here, it says it's 5,599 pixels wide. So if we actually open this up and zoom in, that's absolutely enormous. And that's got way more detail than we need for this hero section. In fact, because this is a background image, we don't even need to make it look perfect on retina displays. I mean, you can barely make this out behind the overlay color. So we're actually gonna scale this down to a much smaller size. So for a hero section image, I like to use about 1400 pixels for the width because that's gonna look good on most screens, especially if it's a background. If you really need the image to be high resolution, you could consider going up to maybe 2000 pixels, but 1400 is pretty good. So let's go ahead and resize this image. I'm gonna go edit image and new dimensions, 1400 scale. And what you choose for the dimensions for an image like this really depends on how good you want the image to look. Who's gonna be looking at the image? Is this site primarily viewed on mobile phones? Is it viewed on large desktop screens? So that's really up to you, but is a good general rule, 1400 is a reasonable starting point for a hero section image. So, okay, we have scaled the image down. Let's go ahead and get the URL to this image and paste it in. So this is a background image, so I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that URL in. And as you can see, it looks almost exactly the same. Very little discernible difference. So let's go ahead now and save this. And let's go ahead and run another performance report. So gtmetrics.com, paste in our URL. And here is our report. So now we're down to 2.8 megabytes. So big difference from 13.5 megabytes that we started with. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the waterfall chart and see if we can make further optimizations. So here's a waterfall chart. And we still got this big gray bar here for this clock.png image. This image is still 2.3 megabytes. Well, the reason for that is because it's a PNG instead of a JPEG. PNG is meant for things that need to be absolutely pixel perfect, something like an icon or a logo or an illustration. 
but not for a photograph. For a photograph, JPEG is much, much better. So what we're gonna do is convert this image to a JPEG. So to do that, I'm gonna use my this tool called PNG to JPEG.com, PNG to JPG.com. And what we're gonna do is just upload our PNG. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually download that. So here's the image, copy the URL into my browser, and let's go ahead and save this image. And now we're gonna to go to png2jpeg.com. Watch out for the ads, because they're often gonna look like upload buttons. You wanna click this upload button right here. Upload your image, 2.3 megabytes, converting, compressing, download. Here's our downloaded image. And if we open it up, it looks basically exactly the same, right? Here's the PNG, here's the JPEG. Can you tell the difference? I can't tell the difference. So let's go ahead and upload this JPEG image now. So let's go to this image here, browse, upload, select files, downloads. Here's our JPEG. Look at that, 260 kilobytes as opposed to 2.3 megabytes. So we saved big on that. Let's go ahead and save. And now let's go ahead and run another performance report. So gtmetrics.com, paste in your URL. And look at this, we're now down to 821 kilobytes for the size as opposed to where we started with 13.5 megabytes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the recommendation here on surf scaled images. And it says we're doing pretty well. We could save 9.7 more kilobytes if we scaled images down further. Now, one thing this isn't detecting though, is that we have used these high resolution retina images here, right? This image is 1000 by 1500. Does it really need to be high resolution retina for this photograph? I'd say no, if you're a photographer, then sure, yeah. But on this website, for the purpose of this image, don't. No. So let's actually scale this down by half, 500 by 750. Go ahead and paste that in. Let's go ahead and save the page. And let's go back to our performance report. Um, let's take a look at the waterfall tab again. And is there anything that sticks out? Uh, this clock image, yes, which is why we just shrunk it down a little bit further. Um, but other than that, no, it looks like we've got the images that we need to get. So that is excellent. Let's go ahead and run a final performance report now and see the resulting size of the page. So gtmetrics.com. And here is the page with the images optimized. So we're now fully loaded 2.5 seconds, total page size of 630 kilobytes, as opposed to previously 3.3 seconds, 13.5 megabytes. Now, you also have to understand that with this performance testing tool, it's using a very fast connection. So while we only save 0.8 seconds on the performance testing tool, Somebody on a cell phone that's out of range, airport Wi-Fi, or slower internet connection could be saving, you know, 10 seconds, 30 seconds loading this page. Now, if you have a ton of images to optimize, you may not want to do this process manually. So there is a plugin called Short Pixel. And if you install that in WordPress, you can set this to go through your media library and compress everything. Now it's not 100% perfect, but it's gonna get you 98% of the way there. And then you're gonna to wanna to do what I showed in this video with the performance report, checking the waterfall for anything it may have missed, anything that you could scale down further, that sort of thing. And that way you're gonna go from something like this to something like this. Now the next thing we're gonna do is remove the unnecessary font weights that we're using on this site. So if you look at the waterfall chart, you see that we're loading a ton of font files here from fonts.gstatic.com. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Do we really need to be loading 11 different font styles on this site? I don't think so. So let's go ahead and disable those. So I'm using Oxygen here, but if you're using another theme, 
uh, Visual Builder, whatever you're using, they typically have a way to manage fonts. So what you're gonna wanna do is just only use the fonts that you actually need. So here I'm using Source Sans Pro for the headings and Open Sans for the text. But on this site, I really think it's gonna look just fine if I use Open Sans for both. And indeed it does. You'd really have to be militant about design to care about the difference here. And then in terms of weights, so there are a ton of weights, right? There's 300, which is lightweight, regular weight, italic, 600, which is semi-bold, semi-bold italic. Um, we're gonna only check the weights we actually wanna use here. So I'm gonna say 300, regular, and 700. And that's gonna stop any of the other font files from being loaded, even if you're using them somewhere. Like even if we went like this and we chose like a way to 400, or sorry, a way to 500 or 600, that way wouldn't be loaded because we haven't chosen it here. Now, other builders don't have this feature, but what you can do is just go through your pages and make sure you're only using, you know, a few weights for your font. And you can also can choose not to load italic fonts. You can let the browser simulate that, right? So this is what browser simulated italics looks like, whereas this is what real italics looks like. Do we really care about the difference? Not really. We're not writing a book here. So let's go ahead and save this page and then run another performance report and see how we do with the fonts optimized. So look at that. We're now down to 2.1 seconds and 502 kilobytes, which is a massive improvement. If we look at the waterfall, we'll see instead of loading seven different font faces, we're loading just three. So that's much better. Okay, now that we have optimized our site by removing unnecessary bloat, compressing images, optimizing fonts, etc., let's go ahead and check our web hosting provider to make sure that they're delivering that optimized site to the user as quickly as possible. When the user goes to yoursite.com, they shouldn't have to wait for the web host to generate the page and send it to them. They, the web host should have something called caching enabled which means a saved copy of the page has already been generated and the user just gets that page instantly from the web host with no waiting. So here's how we're gonna check that. So we're gonna go to the performance report. We're gonna go to the waterfall tab and we're gonna look at this first request, getyoursite.com. And this should be happening in 200 milliseconds or less. If this takes any more than 200 milliseconds uh, and you got a big purple bar here, that means that your web hosting provider probably doesn't have caching enabled. So you either need to get them to enable that or switch to a modern web hosting provider like WP Engine where it's enabled by default. So in this example, if you mouse over the purple bar here, you'll see this box pop up. And on the right side of the box, you'll see blocking, DNS lookup, connecting, sending, waiting, and receiving. You want to look at the number to the left of waiting. In this case, it's 1.32 seconds. That means when the user goes yoursite.com, they have to wait 1.32 seconds before your web hosting provider actually sends them your page. Now, this is bad, obviously. We want the web hosting provider to send a cached copy of the page immediately. So, okay, we don't have caching on this site. The next thing we're going to do is check for gzip compression. So to do that, go over to the PageSpeed tab, and under the recommendations list, you're gonna look for the gzip compression recommendation. Now, you're either gonna get an A on this, so you're gonna get a green bar over here, or you're not. And if you don't get an A, it's possible that you could be loading some tracking scripts like Hotjar, Google Analytics, whatever, that may not be compressed, but it could be that your host doesn't have gzip compression enabled. So you're gonna open this recommendation, and you're gonna look at the URLs that need to be compressed. And if those URLs have yoursite.com in them, that means your host does not have gzip compression enabled. So you need to either get them to enable that or move to a modern web hosting provider like WP Engine that has that stuff enabled by default. So the next thing you're gonna check is your PHP version. We wanna be using PHP version seven. So go to your WordPress admin panel 
go to plugins, add new, and install WP space server info. No space between server and info. This is the plugin right here. And we can deactivate this in a minute. This is just to check our PHP version. So once that's activated, you're gonna go over to dashboard, WP server info, and look for PHP, and the value should be version seven point something. Right here, we're running 5.6. We don't want that, it's not as fast. PHP seven is newer, it's faster. So you wanna be using a modern web host with PHP version seven. So anyway, here's our performance report on the sandbox install. It's got no caching, no gzip, PHP 5.6. And what I did is I just copied this exact site using all-in-one WP migration, exactly as is, copied it over to WP Engine. And let's go ahead and run a performance report with this same exact site, same site, same everything. Nothing's changed. We just moved it to WP Engine. Let's go ahead and run a performance report for it and see how we do. And look at this. Fully loaded time, 435 milliseconds. That is less than half of a second. Total page size with gzip compression has been compressed down to 386 kilobytes. Incredible. So let's recap where we started. We had an unoptimized site, fully loaded 5.1 seconds, 13.6 megabytes. Then in 41 requests. Then we removed unnecessary plugin bloat, unnecessary WordPress bloat, and we got down to 3.3 seconds, 13.5 megabytes, 26 requests. Then we optimized our images and optimized our fonts, and we went to a fully loaded time of 2.3 seconds and a total page size of 502 kilobytes with 18 requests. And then we said, okay, we've optimized the site as much as we can within reason. Let's go ahead and move it to a web hosting provider that's gonna give it to our users quickly. So we move it to WP Engine, and we're now at 435 milliseconds, 386 kilobytes. This is a fast loading website. And another thing you notice is that we started out with bad grades, you know, an F and a D here. These grades are ultimately meaningless, by the way, but a lot of people take stock in it, maybe your clients do. And I didn't chase the grade. I don't care about the grades. I'm sure some people who went to school and got A's see these bad grades and say, oh no, I need a good grade. But what you really need is results. And notice by chasing the results, we also got the good grades automatically. I quit school, so I don't really care about grades. I care about results. And we've got a 435 millisecond load time on the exact same site, looks the same, works the same. Everything about this thing is the same for all practical purposes. And we went from this to this in one hour, no buy-in plugins, no tweaking server configuration, nothing advanced. Okay, that is how to build a fast loading website step by step. If you want to make building bloat-free, fast loading websites easier on yourself, I highly recommend you check out Oxygen. That is the visual builder made by my company because it is designed to be clean and lean and bloat-free right out of the box. Uh, unlike some of our competitors that load over a thousand kilobytes of CSS and JavaScript on an otherwise blank page, Oxygen, generally speaking, is only going to load what you actually put on your pages. So that's going to make your sites cleaner, leaner, smaller, and faster. So if you're interested in something like that, check out OxygenBuilder.com to learn more. Again, this is Lewis from Oxygen, and thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that training. With a faster running website, you're going to have more engagement fewer people bouncing away from your website because it's loading too slow, and more opportunities to advertise with Google Ads. The best of luck.